Uh, Wiki's collaborative software. It's software uh, uh, I made it on the web and and uh, allowed people to come to a website and create something. And I think what's really turned out is that people discovered that they can create something with other people that they don't even know, but they come to trust and they make something that surprises uh, surprises them all of them in terms of its uh, its value. Uh, HyperCard was a, kind of a drawing program where you could draw a bunch of pages, a bunch of sh screens, and then cause one screen to link to another. And I, uh, well, nobody knew what Hypertext was then, so it was kind of hard to figure out, well, what are you supposed to do with this? And, and, and I like that idea of having something, something that kind of challenges you, and I like to figure out what to do with things. So, so uh, I thought, well, I'll make a bunch of cards about uh, how ideas move through my company. An interesting thing about it was that uh, it assumed that if you wanted to make a link, if you wanted a button on one card to go to another card, you would know what other card, and it would already exist. And when I was asking people to tell me about how ideas move through the company, they were always talking about moving to a company someplace that there wasn't a card for. So I just made it so that you could type the name of something, and when you press the button to go to the link, if it wasn't there, it made the card. And that uh, making it on demand let you uh, move around a hypertext, and when you got to the edge of it, it would just push that edge out farther. And so I could tackle a subject that's like un unimaginably large, every idea in my whole company. And, and but people who knew about ideas would would just follow it around. They'd go from card to card until they went to some place. They got to the edge, but they went to the edge because they knew about that edge. They wanted to see what I said about it. And, I, and what my program said is, I don't know about this. Tell me something about this. And they just loved to write. In fact, in in HyperCard, people would come sit at my desk and they, they'd want a demo of HyperCard, and I'd show them this program, and they wouldn't leave. <laughs> You know, I had a pet theory that, that engineers wouldn't use an idea unless they'd seen it work before, you know, that they were basically conservative. And so uh, ideas were slow to be absorbed. And so I was interested in how ideas moved around in communities. And that notion was more important than any particular hypertext. But we had held some conferences. Uh, we called it the Pattern Languages of Programming conference or pattern languages of programs and had a hundred people come out to uh, the University of Illinois. This was at uh, the summer of uh, 1994 and talked about how we needed to write about computer programs in a different way so that we captured these ideas and why people decided an idea was good or bad. And then my friends said, oh, let me show you this new thing called the World Wide Web, University of Illinois, right? They created the first graphical browser, and they showed this to me, and they said, Ward, we think you need to make a hypertext pattern repository. Well, of course I thought, you know, I'd done this before with the hypercard, and I just needed to move it over to the web, and then I wouldn't have people sitting around my desk because it was the web, it was international. So, so it solved that problem, and could I do it? Could I, could I get forms? And I, I had to make up this idea of, of markup because I had to account for the fact that I didn't have the buttons that I had in HyperCard. You know, I, I, it's a different system, but I made markup and, and then I tried it and I sat there and I started typing stuff in and it was as much fun as I remember. I knew what it was fun to do it in HyperCard. I knew people wouldn't leave my desk, but I could sit there on the web and I said, I've got it. This is the feeling. I, you know, I pay attention to what it feels like to use computer programs, and it felt right. So I knew it was important. I knew it would serve the purpose, which I wanted to talk about ideas, again, in computer programming. So the audience I was imagining was people just like me. People were very surprised, or in fact, sometimes people would, you know, send me email and say, well, we've, I don't want to mention it, but you've got a terrible bug in your system that lets people write anything. <laughs> and, or or they, would, they would say, you've got a mistake on this page, and they would send me an email telling me what the mistake was and what I should have said instead. And, 
And to encourage them, I would just take their email and, and paste it into the wiki and then send them a pointer to the page that says, well, I took the liberty of taking your message and putting it in the wiki for you, but you could have done it yourself. And, and I babysat the community that way for, you know, a couple of years. Uh, the other thing is because I didn't have any notion, you know, I encouraged people not to, to sign their works. I thought, you know, you, your, your words, your ideas are a gift to the community and you shouldn't be claiming credit for it just because then nobody else is going to improve it. They're going to feel it's yours. So I discouraged that, but I used that a lot myself. I, I did probably 80% of my editing anonymously and that just let people feel that well, there's a large community here. There's all this back and forth, and it, it is, has a consistency because I wrote a lot of it. But that's a, a bootstrapping problem. I had, to, I had to make it feel like there is a community to attract a community, and uh, people poured in. The other thing is I invited the people with the most recognizable names. And so uh, when they showed up and wrote something, you know, they only had to write a page or two because somebody else who's less well known would say, oh, he's here, I should be here, you know, so there's kind of stroked vanity. Well, well, you know, I might have been wrong on some of this stuff. I mean, sometimes people really feel if they aren't going to get credit for what they write, they don't want to write. But what I was encouraging is people to, to recognize that they're gifting their words, their, you know, it's just an idea, and ideas are cheap. And, and when people would write something and come back later and find that their words had improved, you know, I mean, that's pretty exciting. You say, boy, overnight this got better. You know, who made this better? And it's almost mystery because they didn't sign it either. You know, it's like, oh, the wiki made this better. And, and it was, uh, uh, well, you're not used to things getting better on their own. A classic thing on uh, uh, computer communication boards and that at the time was you would write something and somebody would spot a spelling error and so they would say, you spelt that this and it spelt, you spelt that, you know, and because the only place you could write is at the bottom. You could add, but you couldn't change. And so, uh, you know, you write something and you come back and you, all you find is tedious uh, complaining about what you said. Now in my system, you know, you write a spelling error, somebody just fixes it. And you come back and you don't even notice it was there. But you find this one sentence that somebody added that really gets at something you were trying to say. And so, so you get the positive stands out and the negative is just erased. Now the nice thing there is if somebody comes along in the meantime and is reading who knows less than you, they might find your partial answer valuable. You know, and so this is this, uh, this idea that you start, you know, every thought is kind of a seed and it just grows and grows and grows. And that's, uh, uh, it's, it's been used very effectively on Wikipedia, but it, it was very important on my wiki, which was really about changing the way people talk about computer programs, because there wasn't anything other than people's direct experience to fall back on. So. Uh, as people would write about their experience programming, uh, people would read it, and that's the first time they had ever read somebody talking about, say, you know, being afraid that they wouldn't be able to get the program done, and how that changed the decisions they made out of fear, or, or uh, uh, how they found a way to uh, work with somebody else and and find the thing that is acceptable to both. Or lots of Lots of aspects. We, we were very interested in how computer programs uh, could form uh, in an emergent way where, where you didn't have a master plan for the computer program. You say, well, we have a general idea what we want to do, and you know some of it, and I know some of it, and Joe knows some of it, but we're all going to work together and just let the program grow. Well, you know, to, to talk about something like that, which was unheard of at the time in computer programming, uh, in an environment, in a text system, in a discussion board that had the same property. Well, it was, it was a demonstration of the very concept that we were trying to explore for computer programming. And, and it is true in computer programming. We see it all the time and it's accepted now, but it was, it was, it was considered foolishness 
when we started, and now it's recognized as really the only way to make a really great program. It was my first uh, Hawaiian word that I learned as they were trying to direct me to the wiki wiki bus between terminals. And uh, wiki is a Hawaiian word that means quick, and so wiki wiki means very quick. So it's the very quick web. It's always been technically called wiki wiki web, but when I wrote the script, the CGI script that made it work, it was on a Unix system, and of course on Unix you always use abbreviations and lowercase, so I called it wiki.cgi in, in uh, Unix, and so most people didn't want to bother to say wiki wiki web, they just called it wiki. And that's fine with me. So it's like saying, oh, here's a system called Quick. <laughs> if you need more minds, you know, if, if, you, if one person knows everything and they can kind of sit back and really think deeply, they can see the whole program and then just write it down or, or write a poem. You know, I, I think, you know, poetry is one of those things that's personal enough, you know, that if you write a poem a day after 30 years, you're a great poet and, and you, it's probably a solo thing. But computer programs and encyclopedias are of a scale that you have to make it a collaborative effort. And then to make it good, to make it read like it was from a single mind is the challenge. And that's where people have to learn how to complement each other, or oh, I like to say play to each other's strengths, where you take you know, what you're good at and I take what I'm good at and we find a way to fit it together to make like we were one Superman and that, that happens. It's, it's not that hard. There is a style of working together where uh, we'll agree ahead of time that you'll do this part and I'll do this part and if you don't hold up your end of the deal then you know I'm gonna you know take you to court or something like that. That's this contracting style stuff and I think that's that's better than competition but it's it it is only works for things where you know where you're going in the end. You know what the whole is going to be. And, and uh, that's a useful way to work. But that, because people who were funding computer programs, they thought, well, that's how we wanted to work this way. I, if I'm going to pay you for six months to write a computer program, I want to know what you're going to do and you're going to do and you're going to do. And, and, it, and it was the master plan. And it turns out that that uses a small percentage of the capability of the computer. The computer is much better if you let it become what it really wants to be or the best that you can make it. And that's, uh, you know, has this sort of sense of faith. You know, you have to believe that it's going to come out even though you can't say what it is. I mean, if somebody decided what the pages of Wikipedia were going to be, you know, at the beginning of the project, they would have made a list of important sounding pages and there would have been all kinds of stuff that people love in there that they wouldn't have thought of. You know, I got this, you know, kind of grow from the center out kind of dynamic right for uh, uh, a hypertext document on the web. And that's been a model of sharing. And it involves, you can learn enough about each other to develop this trust relationship. But there's a, a couple of things that Wikipedia did right that it didn't even occur to me. And, uh, you know, for example, uh, getting the licensing right. I was careless about the licensing. And I think that saying, you know, this has to be licensed this way. Here's the ownership. Here's the guarantees going forward. Uh, I, that's important. And I just wasn't interested in that stuff. So I didn't do that right. Can you explain what that means? Getting well, the, well the, right? the, 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 that, uh, the openness, you know, I was open, but I, I was open, but there was no guarantee that it was open. There was no agreement, you know, when somebody submitted. There was an expectation, but it wasn't written down. And in fact, I think when I finally did write it down, I said, well, I own it. And, you know, you had the right to use it, but you can't keep it. And that's, that's not really open. But uh, you know the the I, I think Jimmy Wales' relationship to with Richard Stallman and you know got that right. The other thing that 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 I just didn't think about, or I thought would be too hard, was being international. The the, the fact that because it's licensed to be reused, of course, that means the content is free to go into other languages, 
and and the fact that people might read one and want to write in their own language and and that that international aspect I think is profound in, in terms of actually having an opportunity to in some sense bring the world together it's it's the Wikipedia is probably one of the strongest forces in computers for you know creating peace in the world you know it's in, in that sense it's fabulous you know this this understanding and to just believe that it, it could be done in every language when you find yourself reading you know an encyclopedia that is about the things you care about because it was written by people just like you talking about what they care about and that caring you know become so important to you 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 trust this well the fact that that same sort of interaction is happening in a lot of different cultures now we could talk about edit wars and stuff like that but but what really is happening is there, there are people who are moving back and forth between different languages the people who are fortunate enough to to know and understand multiple cultures can in this world just carry little bits of culture back and forth and when I when I read something even in the English Wikipedia and I see some mention of you know where the airplane was really invented or or something like that it, it, it's broad in a sense that uh, because people who have a worldly view when I'm unfortunately not very worldly but have a worldly view have shared their worldly view and part of it is because they got involved with their language you know so so uh, English is a big one but but it's even more important if you have more obscure languages it it, it makes you part of one one world one world of ideas and and that that idea that every language is important just says every person is important too